when filmmakers or short uh, filmmakers would find our stuff and would want to use it commercially, I would have to do it myself. Do you guys have any plans to actually, you said you were going to work with musicians or creators and net labels and all that. Do you have plans to go, okay, what if somebody does want to license this? Is that one of the yeah. things that you're looking to do? Yeah, I, th I, I think that's that's where uh, the connection between the, the tri Tribe of Noise a free music archive really kicks in. So the the marriage with with Kid Split uh, was a bit of a strange one. I, I, in, uh, what was their? I'm sorry. What was their? Uh, what did they do? I, I meant to ask that earlier. It, I it's, knew it's, of the it's name. A, it's a, a video rental or a video equipment rental uh, uh, place. Okay. And uh, so, you know, camera rentals or, or like, you know, everything you need for, for uh, shooting a video or, or uh, photography. Oh, and, so and they why were going they, from the other angle. They were the, they were filmmakers going, now we have an archive of music for films. No. Oh, okay. it was actually, actually, <laughs> actually, uh, actually a little bit, uh, uh, Probably, probably even even more simplistic. Um, if you type in the words "free your music" on Google, mm -hmm. you end up on Free Music Archive, right? Which which means that let's say half a million people a day download two to three terabytes of content of Free Music uh, Archive every single day. Mm -hmm. Which means that those people are probably filmmakers, videographers, documentary, blah blah blah. So the audience that they serve with video rental and equipment rental. Is actually the same audience that that wants to download free music from Free Music Archive. Okay. If you put a lot of banners on Free Music Archive saying like "Rent your camera here, rent your camera here," then you know you might turn over more money. Um, maybe there was a bigger plan behind it, but but you know if we downsize it to like what was the direct link between uh, KidSplit and Free Music Archive. I think it was the link for using the search the search engine optimization of Free Music Archive to attract more people to rent more stuff at at KidSplit. That was my first uh, thought when it got bought is they were just buying the name. Kind of like the way that um, Odeo was bought by some other company because it was the podcasting company that turned into yeah. Twitter and they bought Odeo and then just was like, what, we have the name? And it's like, what do you do? I have no idea. Um, yeah. Okay. But by the way, th luckily enough, so uh, 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 because I don't want to end up with 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 this, that this sounds like a negative thing from uh, from from KidSplit. Oh no! They did try to manage uh, Free Music Archive. They did put in the money to make sure that that Free Music Archive didn't die on us. So uh, in the end, it survived for an additional year, and and, and we could acquire it. So uh, kudos for KidSplit. But uh, uh, I, I think that was the, the the basic the basic way in for them. For Tribe of Noise, it's it's different. So Tribe of Noise roughly represents um, before we acquired uh, Free Music Archive, uh, thirty five thousand artists in one hundred and ninety plus countries, independents. Uh, we helped them uh, with Creative Commons licensing to get their music in front of people who license for documentaries, films, videos, advertisements, you know, any professional use for, for, for music. And uh, our biggest problem to uh, uh, promise to them, not problem, promise, is if we actually license music and make money, we share that money with you as a participating artist. Um, if we don't make money, don't give up your daytime job. If we don't make money, you know, you, you don't uh, make any money. Otherwise, we share that money with you. So... Now think about Free Music Archive. It's all these people who just upload uh, under a Creative Commons with some some um, uh, uh, terms and conditions attached. You know, you, you are originally saying like you have to attribute me as an artist, mm -hmm. or uh, you can't use it non uh, commercially, or I don't want you to make any uh, derivatives, or you know, there are a couple of things that you can that you can put to the Creative Commons license or add to the Creative Commons license. And now all of a sudden. There is a second part of this of this journey where you can say like, okay, this is what I do on Free Music Archive, but Tribe of Noise actually has a um, uh, uh, an online store where they actually sell licenses without my interference. So it's pre-licensed, pre-cleared, pre-priced to an audience that actually wants to use it for a commercial video or wants to use it for an advertisement or whatever. Uh, so we now see that some of these artists that are actually were on Free Music Archive, just with non-commercial, non-derivative, like, you know, full swing, uh, you can listen, share, and download, and that's it. Um, 
are now looking at some of the models that Tribe of Noise uh, has been applying for the last 12 years and say like, mm-hmm. okay, but for like some other songs that we have, we actually want to test drive and see if, if we can actually make a few bucks from licensing it to a YouTuber or a podcaster or um, even big brands like, you know, Adidas or Coca-Cola or whatever. So let, let's, let's see if we can also do that. So it's just adding more options without uh, pushing them into one model because I can, I can, I can, I'm not going to tell you, but I can tell you a couple of brands that that will come in for free and then, uh, you know, you're in there for the freemium model and for sharing and for all the good reasons with, with Creative Commons. And then somewhere down the line, they say like, okay, just sign sign here and all of your rights are exclusively signed to one company and, and you're like, there's a vendor lock-in kind of situation that you don't want to end up in. So right. all the stuff we do is uh, non-exclusive. All the stuff that we do is an, a choice, an option that we offer to the musicians Take it, leave it, test it, don't test it, whatever you want, you know, just go for it. And we just, you know, throw stuff at the wall and see if it sticks. And if it does stick and it works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, you know, just don't use it or don't use it anymore. 